On today's episode, we're gonna be restoring these front steps in front of my house. So stay tuned. So friends, yeah, here is my front steps. It's concrete, definitely a lot of peeling. Uh, past owner painted it white, now it's fading. Let's take these off. Yeah, it's just stained. There's actually some Trex decks on top of here when we first move in. I removed all that. If you go here, you might have to chip off some areas right here. Kind of level it out a little bit. I'm going to change this out. But I'm not going to change this out today. That will be a separate video. Um, I'm mostly going to focus on the cement and restoring it. Making it look at least decent. Taking out all these stains peeling paint here yeah this paint has to be peeled off we're gonna paint the sides as well put some masking tape on the sides cover the door I'm not gonna pressure wash it because it's gonna take a while for it to dry I don't want to have to wait tomorrow's gonna rain fall is here in Washington so it's gonna be hard one two one to two weeks of rain i'm not gonna have time to finish it if i do pressure wash it let's get to that today we mask that off so we don't get any or mess up the sidings Again, I'm not going to mask this off right here. Stay tuned for the next um, upcoming videos. I'm going to go and change this out. So I'm not too worried if I damage that or not. Because it's pretty much water damaged anyway. So I'm not going to change that out for in this video. I'll be a separate one. So if you look right here. There's some raised concrete cement. So I'm just going to be using this chisel. Chisel that away. Same on this side. Just gonna clean that up a little bit. I'm gonna use a brush. Clean out the corners, clean out the crevices. So the most useful tool that I'll be using for this project is this angle grinder plus this four and a half inch grinder wheel. So if you're interested on both of these and all the tools that I use in this video, I'll leave the link on the description down below. Now word of caution, I'm only removing the grinder shield because so I can reach all the difficult corners. Again, there's some square edges on these projects. So in order to be able to reach as close as possible, I have to remove the shield. But be careful again whenever you're using this please use the shield if you are unconfident of using this without the shield so again always practice safety first so i am wearing a particulate respirator safety glasses and i highly suggest that you wear a face shield just in case so that you don't have anything flying on your face So here's what I mean by trying to reach those little tight corners just like this corner right here. By having that shield off, it'll make you reach as close as possible to those edges. Here's what it looks like after we grinded everything. Again, some of the paint is still there but i just ended up knocking all the loose paint all the um, lifting edges again uh, in my opinion you can't grind everything 100 percent just do your best and make sure that you try to feather everything now when you're done just go and sweep everything up i highly suggest that you use a shop vac also so that you can vacuum out all the edges and all those crevices those hard to reach places that a broom cannot reach so do your best to clean this up for preparation for paint so as I look around the concrete, I do see some craters and some dimples. So I'm using this Pro Select Sika Ready Mix Concrete Patch. 
this comes very convenient because it's already pre-mixed ready to use all you got to do is use a trowel and or you can use a putty knife and just apply this on the corners just like this uh, it does take 24 hours to set in but depending on the temperature outside i'm working in a really hot weather right now over 75 degrees out here right now and it's really hot so this will pretty much harden a lot faster so what you're going to do is you're just going to go and feather out the edges do your best to apply this and yeah make it as smooth as possible if you do it right you don't need to end up sanding it or regrinding anything you're just going to try to do your best to feather the edges and apply it just like this there was a chipped area on the edge of the steps this works great as well so just apply it the same way So the paint that I'll be using is this Valspar porch floor and patio. This is great for wood and mostly concrete since what we are painting over is concrete. I got this at my local big box low stores. Again, you can choose any color that you want, but I chose the color light gray. I chose this because if I did, I know a lot of people are choosing the white color, but over time, I think that gets really stained easily. Uh, it does turn yellow in my honest opinion, and you'll have to repaint it. But going with this color, I believe it'll just, you know, it'll, it'll last a lot longer and will stain less. So it's totally up to you which color that you go for. I'm just applying this with my roller brush and we're gonna do a first coat this dries up pretty fast actually after 15 minutes of putting in the first layer it pretty much dried up already so it was easy to apply the second layer after that So now I'm applying the second coat which applies very easily. Notice how I left the masking tape right on there so that I don't end up painting the sidings. So what I'm doing is I'm just tapping the little craters, the little mini craters that are there. Again, I didn't fully patch all the little tiny dimples imperfections. Kind of gives a little bit of character to the steps. But it is up, totally up to you what you want to do. But yeah, this applies really nice and you're just gonna apply it one layer at a time. For me, I did the second coat actually on the top. Uh, I kinda didn't do, I wasn't very consistent on the layering, but hey, as long as I you put two layers, you should be okay. Now here's a little cool trick that I like to use. Just use any metal flashing edge just like this. I place it on right here. This avoids using masking tape. Makes it makes the job a lot easier. I do this on the when I paint the ceiling of my my house. Um, you just, it just easily acts as a border and you just lay it down and just go to town and it'll create that nice division between where you want to paint again. It's not going to complete. It's still going to you have you're going to have a little bit of bleed off at the ends, but hey, it's it's going to be the outside. I'm not looking for total perfection, just making it look decent. But if you want to try to use this method, by all means, it works really really well, as you can see. Now I'm going to go and touch up the edges, removing some of these uh marble rocks at the end. Again, if you're interested on how I did my side paper edging video, I just finished actually doing this project. Check out that link on the right top corner and check out that video after you watch this one. So 
So now before the paint dries fully just go take off the masking tape. So again don't worry about the bottom door threshold. I'm going to be doing a separate video on how to change that out. But this is how it looks like before. Notice how all the stains are there from the planters. Um, you have this don't worry about the threshold that will be in the next video to change out but you have all the stains peeling paint from the past owner and yeah pretty pretty bad and this is what it looks like now huge improvement makes it a lot cleaner looks a lot more smooth let me know in the comment section below friends what you think of the final product but again i went with the light gray on this one again you can choose white if you want to but i just went with this one you gotta put the touch-ups which is putting all the mats back in place. Everything is dry actually, it only took a few minutes. Again, if you found this video super helpful, please hit that big thumbs up, subscribe and notification bell, and I'll see you friends on the next DIY how-to video.